welcome and learn the code. Here's the code. Ready? I'm doing it just for you. Rule number one, do not discourse. Twitter is not designed for discourse. Rule number two, meme and cream. Enjoy your horny Twitter. Enjoy your meme Twitter. Rule number three, promote. Promote your own work if you have it. If you don't, promote other people's work. Whatever you think is cool, promote the shit out of that stuff on Twitter is literally an ad platform. It's perfect for promoting shit, okay? And four, dunk on your abject enemies. Oh, here's one. What's this one? All right, if you say this is a good one, I'll watch this one. Let's do it. You bastard. You fucking bastard. You fucking huh? bastard. I should have seen it. I should have seen the two cues. Fuck. I trusted you, Snips. I trusted you, Snips. But now you have a you have a mute. Enjoy your mute. Even in hard times, you can find happiness together. Even if your family of blood doesn't work out, you can find love and care. Yeah, foraged family, yeah. Humans have transcended genetics in a lot of ways. We care, we tell our stories and we share things with one another regardless of whatever genetics would have limited us to before. In fact, more, it could be more legitimate than the blood relationships. Because remember, blood, blood relationships only transmit how to build a human body and how to build a human brain. But everything else, all of the ideas we store up here have to be transferred to us to, from one human to another by means of communication. And th those relationships are where the, that's where the real meat and potatoes of human society exists. It exists in our minds. It exists in uh, the, the things that we create or in the things that we teach one another. The blood of the oath is thicker than the water of the womb. Anarchy is when Starbuck, Bringo, Bringo, Starbuck, Wingo, Br Window, Br what the fuck? You just created a sentence that broke my brain. What the fuck, Busy B? I thought anarchy is when Starbuck window break. It's the, what? What the fuck? The CIA sends their regards. <laughs> you know, when I was hungry, when I was, when I was literally didn't have money for food when I first moved to California and we were getting food from a church food pantry. Did you know that the state refused my application twice because of a technicality? I submitted the exact same thing and they finally approved me, but that cost me a week of benefits. I'm lucky that I don't have anything that will kill me right away. These things are incredibly, incredibly difficult. It's a way to make people be unable or not want to get benefits. You would lose money on drug testing and that people still vote for this. Means testing is expensive because you have to hire an army of bureaucrats to check through endless paperwork. So if you're wondering why I told fucking Joe Biden that he needs to see me after class, it's because of this. We cannot be lulled back to brunch by a couple of nice things being thrown our way. Yeah, I tend to believe that like political edutainment is not necessarily a lesser, but just a different type and it needs to be understood for what it is. You know, uh, as you can see by my silly bear head I have in the background, um, if you come in a segment and I'm memeing about having a, you know, with a, a Fortnite bear head on my head and i'm making fun of nancy pelosi you know that's the entertainment part <laughs> not necessarily the ed education part but it can make the education part more fun and more palatable you know there's always like i mean teachers the best everybody has a memory of a teacher they really loved who did something really cool and sometimes it was something fun like that that made learning fun and i do believe in making learning fun it's something i'm passionate about you got to get on streaming vermin absolutely please do i'll rate into you whenever i can that would be awesome. I'm sure we would have a lot of fun. More, listen, unironically, more femme presenting streamers. I almost said drone pilots and I had to stop myself. Nah, I, I mean, I guess I would consider myself a social revolutionary um, in that I believe very much in pushing courageously and strongly for social change. Um, I don't advocate for violence ever. Uh, I, I just don't, it's not what my platform is for. I'm an educator and not like, that's not what I deal in. I do believe in boldly pushing for social change. And I think that we shouldn't just accept the crumbs of whatever is offered to us by the democratic party or whatever is seen as acceptable at the moment. Um, so 
uh, and I think that's reflected in my work to a certain degree. Of course, I'm limited because at the end of the day, I'm streaming on YouTube. So there's rules you have to obey. Yeah, I mean, I, I would consider myself a, a social revolutionary. I do think that the key is changing the way that we inter engage with one another. And I think that's especially important in the age of the internet where uh, so many people are lost and lonely and don't have communities or fall into communities that are very toxic or culty or exploitative. And I think that we can really change the world if we can learn how to um you know solidify good practices for how to build safe communities how to empower one another and i think it can be i think it could change the way that we see the world and i think we're in a in a desperate need for change uh we are in a place where covid has specifically covid but also just late capitalism in general has put us in a position where a lot of us don't even recognize the life that we used to live when we were younger. Um, I know that's true for me. I'm 30, so I'm not like that old, but like my, the life that I and my peers live now is nothing like what it even was for our parents when everything is gig economy and everybody's scrounging yeah. you. But what we, what you see now, even those people who do have a house, those people are like often like have side hustles and all this shit it's just like the tension has been increasing and increasing and increasing and it's to the point where like they haven't had like a, a get together with friends in like years i grew up pretty poor you know like we used to have bonfires cheap shit you get like a couple of shit from the dollar store some of those crappy pies and you hang out outside because you have a night that you can do that but people don't have that anymore our society is rapidly changing and i think that that means that we need to uh embrace that change is coming that change is here and that we can evolve our society in a good way we don't just have to let it fall in a bad way the dunk that's the point of the dunk the new sake hey windleby thank you so much instead of lifting up a poor white name out of chat out of i chose i chose i can't hear it but you all can i can't hear it i'm all in the clear get wrecked yay we got yodi wasn't that cute wasn't that cute? Look, she even knows. This morning I was like, Yodi, you wanna sing for the you wanna sing for chat? You haven't seen chat, you haven't seen the imps in forever. And Yoda was like And so I was like, Alright. And so I brought her in and and I petted her and I just said, You wanna sing? And she goes, Alrighty. Like she knows it. She loves singing for you all. I'm not kidding you. She does get it. She totally gets it. Oh, hello, C Space. Hello. Can you hear me? C Space, what are your pronouns? What? What are your pronouns? Just, just the normal ones. Okay. Do you use he, him pronouns? Do you use she, her pronouns? Or do you use they, I they, am they, a they, man. Do you use he, him pronouns? Do you use she, her pronouns? Or do you use they, them pronouns? I'm asking you. A very I am question. a male. It's not a hard question. I'm a man. Uh, would, would you like me to ask that again? There are men. Use male pronouns. Male pronouns? Okay, so there you, you mean go. like, do you mean he, him then? Or do you mean she, her? Because there are some men who do prefer she, No, her there aren't. Yes, don't, there don't, are. don't put this crap oh, yes, with me. This is a simple question. This is a literal question I ask every it's single day. It's not guest. a simple question. There's all kinds of crap you're throwing at me. Wait, I said wait, I'm a man and you said, wait, well, it doesn't space, matter. You can, space, you can be a man who speaks. Space. You cannot pump and dump a mortgage. You can pump and dump a stock. You can force a, a fake amount of worth into a stock that is one of the schemes that actually I watched take place in the 90s when my neighborhood was full of a bunch of freaking when I, am I allowed to curse yeah you can curse just don't say I'm fucking sure. don't say any slurs like no slurs so a bunch of people I don't like started doing that and they were ruining the stock market of all the stores around us because they would purchase these stocks they would pump and dump and they put several people out of business but what you cannot okay. do that with is something like a mortgage or a car Wait a minute. 2008 housing crash was caused by subprime mortgages which is the same thing there it's obviously technically different like how it actually works out but the sub the the uh the subprime mortgage crisis was exactly the same thing it was um a higher value being put on mortgages that could never be fulfilled. <sighs> you want me to scroll down to key takeaways? I would like you to physically scroll your mouse down to key takeaways. 
Short selling is a trading strategy, strategy in which an investor bets that a stock's price will decline. Thank you. You read, you short read the selling wrong part. Okay. You read the wrong okay. part. Okay, all read. right, dumb fuck. You've been screaming into my ear. I don't know who the fuck you are. You're telling right me to here. read a bunch of different things, and now you're and not even telling me what to read, and you're interrupting me. So why don't you tell me exactly what case you're trying to make? C space and was suspect to more subject to more scrutiny and regulations following the market crashes in 1987, 2001, 2008. Great. From that does not even make close to the argument that you made originally. No, it doesn't. This is Reddit. You have no. You do not understand how information or truth works, do you, Mister C Space? Um, is this is a. This is an. Uh, stop it! Stop it! Shut the fuck up for just a second, because you've come in. Uh, all right. You want to play that game? I will mute you. It will be very no, simple. No, don't, don't mute me. I am me. muting you right now. You've come in and you've said a lot of stupid dumb shit and you've never fucking talked to me before in my entire life. So let's take a minute and allow me to do some talking here. Because you came in here saying that stocks are fake with some dumb shit ass argument that I have no fucking clue what you're even talking about. And then you had a meltdown over pronouns and now you're trying to tell me all this stupid shit And let me just show the chat right now what we're looking at right here is a random paragraph from Investopedia.com with zero citations and all that this paragraph says is in the US Short selling was first banned during the war of 1812 was restricted during the Great Depression and was subject to more scrutiny and regulations following the market crashes in 1987 2001 and 2008 the claim that you made was that short selling was the cause of the Great Depression. I'm having a conversation with Steven right now. Yeah. A stock guy. What do you mean by being a stock guy? I've been working on Wall Street. I, ju I just know quite a bit about the stock market. Okay. Uh, he said that like you had some questions about it or something. And no, I, just I, I didn't have any questions. Steven, uh, I don't know what you were told by C-Space. C-Space came into my chat and picked a fight with me and said he wanted to debate me. He never told me what he wanted to debate on, and then he came in here and said stocks are fake and that the Great Depression was caused by short sellers. And I said, yeah. I don't think that's true. My, I don't, while I'm not a historian, I've read quite a bit about the Great Depression, and it seems to me that the Great Depression might have been caused by a little more than just short selling. I want and to that, talk now. Hold on. Proceeded, no, you are not going to talk yet. I am talking. This is my show. Now. But um, I'm the guest. I don't care. <laughs> And you will not be a guest if you refuse to follow by the rules. I just here. want to tell Stephen okay. one thing. I'm going to be muting you now. No! You are now muted. Super straights is bait. Not only is it transphobic bait, but it is bait. The goal with the whole super straights thing is designed instead to try and trick you into getting into conversations where people can try and make you look like the stereotype that the right wingers put out. There's a pre-existing prejudice. It is thrown at, tra at trans and gay people. And then you have to be on the back foot and defend yourself from something you never said, you never wanted, nobody ever said, nobody ever wanted, but you're being told that's what you're advocating for. And yes, every single year, it's coordinated on 4chan. There's images that are pre-made. You'll see them over and over and over again. And I'm quite sure that this super straights thing is going to... Do that again. Something snipe. Listen, Somebody tonight is maximalism stream, okay? Four video feeds, four chat feeds. We've got D Discord shit all over the screen and a multiple clashing branding going on. It's maximalism stream. Redacted. Hi, VGG crew. Unionism or something. I'm going to make. Okay, he's going to struggle with this for a while. Thank you, SXN. Oh, it might be. Hashed. Somebody I mean, else found the annotation up. feature. Apparently. Uh, campaign to the point of donating to it. So let's look at his chat. Let's do it. Call out Valish Mike Who for- Who cares about the chat? Who cares about the chat? PA for being a grifter snake. <laughs> this is the inception you all cudgels. came for. My UI? No, look, look. Oh, look at how beautiful and clean my UI is. Ready? Ready? <laughs> You're fat! You're, you have a small dick! One of you better have clipped that. Because this is what I this is what I was talking about. This is training, everyone. This is training. Life is strange. Things change all the time. Now, you must experience how to adapt to changing environments. May God help you all. Yes, 
I told you we're doing chaos stream. We may as well embrace it. All right, we're almost at max capacity and then we will call it good. Okay, all right, I can't take any more now. I can't take any more, there's too many. I told you it was maximalism stream. We have reached the other shore. You have been delivered safely to the underworld. Say somebody makes a mistake five years ago and somebody finds their old post. Somebody screenshotted it and saved it for later. And they've learned and grown over five years and they've become a very different person. Now, does that immediately absolve them of whatever wrongdoing that they did? No, but they won't say this person did a thing in the past five years ago. They will say, or this person is a blah, or this person is a nah, whatever. And that can stick, especially if there's motivated reasoning that goes into it. Now, do I think that people should not have consequences for their actions? No, of course, of course. If you do something wrong, it's fair for people to say, hey, fuck, th fuck this, you know what I mean? But what I see all the fucking time is people barreling forward with accusations with no evidence behind it. What I'm trying to talk about is how we break the motherfucking cycle. Because I am so incredibly tired of seeing trans people, of seeing queer people destroyed by their own community when they have a modicum of success. Do you know how motherfucking small BreadTube is in the big picture? Have you ever looked into the, the size of the accounts that the competition is? Nothing. An ant standing among giants. And yet, you will see people say, you're supposed to represent the trans community. And if you don't do it perfectly, what I see is people saying, you are a piece of shit. You are a transphobe. You are an NB phobe. These things get lobbed at people without any actual consideration to whether that's true or not. And usually it's based on very, very uh, spurious evidence that has been exaggerated or extrapolated upon. All right, Yoda, you want to ch show the chat Inside. your tricks? You wanna sing? Uh oh, here sing? comes Yoda. Hold on. Oh, sing? oh, oh, sing? look at the feet. Oh, Jesus. Sing. Hey. Yeah, right, What's sing. up with that face? That's right, sing. Sing along, little Yoda. Sing along. Yes, you love to Open night night. You're such a good girl. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, you're a good girl. You wanna go now? Wanna go back to sleep now? There you go. Thank you, Yoda. Thank you for the singing. There's no, there's no snacks down there. You're just smelling the goldfish box, the empty goldfish box. Wanna call her out? Um. Come on, Yoda, go out. You didn't know this, but uh, this is open mic night tonight. So, so Yoda was the first contestant. Okay. All right, you moon denialist weirdos. Watch. Do you see what this thing is here? This is called a boom. Yes, see? You can see it. He's, they're shoving this thing almost into his dick. People think these are small mics. That's a huge one. People think it's a mic like this, like a tiny mic like this. This mic, tiny. This is about the size of one of those mics. This this is bit bigger than my head. It's, it's very large. And there's a case that goes around it. And inside, it ha they're little suspension things. So that the mic, if there's movements, the mic barely moves and it doesn't rub against anything, okay? There will often be a windscreen, which is like this thing. Sometimes it's fuzzy, other times it's not. I'll let you know that very shortly. It's big, it's not fucking CGI. Oh my God, this is moon landing denialism stuff. Please, you have to Scooby-Doo this shit, okay? I already told you all my one request of all of my of all of my followers, which is to not die. I you there is no fucking room for y'all to fucking die here. I want if there is one thing that I could instill in my audience, it is the will to mother fucking live. Do not fucking lay down and die. Do not fucking do it. If, if, if the world goes to shit, then you die fighting to your last motherfucking breath. I don't care if it's spitting in the eyes of a prison guard. I don't care if it's using your own fucking bone to carve a message into the wall. I don't fucking care. Because you're not going to die. That's why. That's an order.
and we're gonna fucking make it. Most of the time, when people say they feel like they wanna die, what they're really saying is, I'm hurting, but I don't know how to make the hurting stop. And sometimes your brain will interpret that as self-destructive. But I promise you, if you learn to realize that those impulses are you trying to escape pain, you can identify the pain and you can work to get away from it. You can work to fix it. My resolve to live was forged out of the depths of mental hell. It was a breakthrough moment for me, Rain. It takes some time to understand it. All I ask for is you to make a meaningful try. And when I say try, I do mean actually try. I speak from experience. One thing I recognized a few years ago is that I am surrounded by beautiful people. Incredibly, like it blew my mind. I had this, this moment where I realized that, <laughs> where I realized that I was surrounded by wonderful people. People who have incredible talents, people who have unfathomable lives that I can't even understand. And it makes me happy and feel safer knowing that those, those wonderful, creative, incredible, amazing, ingenious people who are all around me also have the will to live. Even if it's fucking hard, even if it sucks, there is one thing that is a, a, a universal truth about motherfucking life is that life wishes to perpetuate. It is an anime protagonist mindset, but it, there's a reason why it's that. There's a reason why people tell you that. There's a reason why it resonates. Because you have to fucking fight. You have to adopt that worldview or you'll be miserable. Adopt that. Adopt that mentality. Because that is the... It is the core piece of life. You understand that? My fellow queers. And you know what? My fellow straights as well. People who have fucking had to ride through the hell that the last few, the last fucking few years. Part of, the, part of my motivation for getting onto stream every single day is because I know that I will keep you all entertained in this fucking hell zone that we're in. I can make your day more fun. And that makes me happy because I want, I want to do my part to, to fucking reduce the disease, okay? I know I can only do a little bit, but I can keep some of you entertained so you don't feel more uh, going out. Death is cringe. Dying is motherfucking cringe. The point is, fucking fight, you motherfuckers. Don't become a fucking Blair White. Yeah, you know what? We could have a TikTok out of that, but I think Alora already knows. I think Alora already knows that we have like a million TikToks from today that would be good. Blair knows her time is running out. This is the person who knows that the time that, that this is somebody who is starting to recognize that her time is out, but she hasn't quite put it all together yet. This is like a like a I don't know, like a Jewish member of the Nazi party going. It, are we the baddies? Am I fucked? And she hasn't quite confirmed that yet. Guess what? And your your trans sisters and trans brothers and trans NB siblings are actually homeless because of the people you support, Blair. And Blair, you're going to be with us soon. This, this party will not protect you. Blair, let me hear you, what you're going to say. Oh, I was just going to say... I mean, he's, he's, he's telling the audience what they want to hear. Are you capable of living chastely? No. Oh. Speaking of which, great news out of Washington. Drugs were just decriminalized. So there was a huge lawsuit that nobody was paying attention to. And they, and they realized that the way the law was written was that it, they had to be able to prove intent. And that was against the constitution of Washington state. So the law was stricken down today. Police right now um, have been told to stop uh, making arrests for minor possession charges. Even if, the, even if the conservatives in the state write a new law recriminalizing it, 
they the old people sentenced under the old law it's it's fucked it's a fucking mess it's wild so yeah those rearrested for parole violations may have their records cleared fines and fees may need refunding immigrants facing deportation for drug felonies may be allowed to stay and the list goes on this case is cataclysmic there's going to be a saying before blake and after blake from now on in the legal world in washington carlin borshenko my name is demon mama you probably don't know who i am yet we just watched your panel with blair white and john doyle and I gotta say, you were really hitting it out of the park there. Why do you associate with people like this? Do you not realize that the right is going the direction of Lauren? They are leaning hard into that. They want that disgusting, discriminatory, prejudiced future. And I'm wondering if you might be endangering yourself by continuing to work with people who just openly espouse Jewish question talking points. You heard the way that she was talking to Blair. What's going to stop them from talking to you like that? You got to realize that these people are going to stab you in the back. These people don't respect you. Why do you help them? So why are you on the right? Mm -hmm. I've noticed one thing that uh, seems to come off to a lot of people. They seem to see you as really angry and aggressive. Yeah, I think that mostly cause, does come down to sexism, right? That's a like... A lot of it, yeah. 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 Yep. I think that real issue and i think that purely for an optical thing mm -hmm. that it might be better for sometimes for you to keep your cool no yeah i don't i don't care uh i know there's a lot of people who are going to get mega triggered by me getting angry about things that i think are completely justified to be angry about and if that bothers them well they can die mad i am not i am i am not interested uh, in playing the demure, demure polite uh, woman role, it, it doesn't work for me. And it doesn't seem to work for rhetoric. I'm not just gonna like tone down my rhetoric in the name of like appeasing a handful of highly sensitive dudes. Not gonna happen. Because one thing that I've been seeing is an increase in sex negativity on the left. And not just sex negativity, but moral panics. Uh, it's not just the left, of course, because keep in mind that moral panics are always capitalized on by the right every single time. But they often start on the left and people will justify it. And interestingly, it's almost always a disposable trans woman who can be, you know, painted as a pervert or disgusting and all of those invisible Dis prejudices against trans people will still be operated on. They just won't be said as openly. And I would say trans women just disappear one day. They're gone. And if you like their stuff, you're like, well, I guess I can't find it anymore. This isn't just people disagreeing with you. It is a, a, a never ending surge of people telling you that you are subhuman, that you are bad for everything that you love, that you are trash and they won't leave you alone ever, ever, every single day. I promise you, it does not matter your size. In a world where more and more people have to scrape together a living of some sort on the internet, losing your, being harassed off the internet can mean starvation, can mean losing your house. So you remove them from the internet and they might not have any connection to anybody else.